climate change is affecting the world in different ways, and whether it's sea level rise or more intense storm activity, the hazard is more acute for countries with fewer resources to mitigate or prepare for these events. Today, we look at Bangladesh, a low-lying country characterized by its vast delta plains and one of the most densely populated regions globally. Here, the impact of climate change is profound and multifaceted. It's important to see what can be done in these countries in order to reduce future losses, build resilience, and minimize the number of climate migrants. Bangladesh is affected by increased flooding, salinity intrusion, agricultural challenges, and displacement and the migration of people. These risks are compounded by health risks when areas become flooded. Recently, Inesh Raish visited rural communities in Bangladesh to see how they are coping and dealing with climate change. Hi Inesh, tell me why you went to Bangladesh and what did you do there? So I went to Bangladesh with the help of a non-profit organization, uh, Friendship, and I went there to research uh, how the communities that live along the river uh, become more resilient and adapt to climate change. I did this to, through a number of personal interviews and also focus group discussions in order mainly to determine the life conditions of these people living in these areas so affected by climate change and how they adapt to this new reality and to these changes. Bangladesh is a small country. It's located between India and Myanmar. The large flat delta is cut by major rivers that empty into the Indian Ocean. Well, these rivers contain numerous islands and sandbars that are subject to river erosion and flooding. These are the main climate hazards in this area. These small sandbars, that are called chars in Bangla, change shape and also move, and mainly they disappear over the years. Climate change is now affecting the intensity of the monsoon season, and this is what increases the risk of flooding and the risk of erosion in the char. Thousands of people live on the islands and the sandbars located in the Brahmaputra River. Um, and here they are deprived from education, medication, medical system, law system, lack of accessibility. They are so isolated, they live in, in remote areas and so it's very difficult for them to reach the mainland. Um, and to reach, to, to reach the mainland actually you have to afford a boat or, or a boat trip and most people cannot bear the cost. People migrate from char to char mainly because they lose everything due to floods or river erosion um, or sometimes because they go look for new opportunities and there are some char that are more developed than others with the adaptation projects so they have more accessibility, they can work on their skills, they can have access to education, to more opportunities. Um, what is the main climate hazard that uh, this char suffers from? Flood and river erosion. Flood and river erosion, okay. That's why we have the flints, right? Because it's one of the river, adaptation river, yeah. methods. 22 family we lives in the Lives the in the plinth and during flood, or near about 200 family shifted here. Yeah. So we, we have 10, 10 volunteers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Five boys and five girls? Five boys and five girls. Okay. Volunteers that are trained for when the flood happens and they uh, help the families, right? Yes. And rescue. And rescue. Uh, and they are early trained with... Early warning. Early warning, yeah. This is the cluster. This is the cluster. This is the cluster. What is the difference uh, between... A, uh, is the cluster the same as a plinth? Yes, as like same. Just one intervention uh, here, uh, toilet with disability, toilet for disability. Ah, okay, nice. There is the satellite, is it, is, it's in school, school. Yeah. but it works during whole year. the whole year works, okay. And uh, this is a cluster. This is a cluster. It's the only cluster in this char, or? Only one cluster. Only one cluster. Okay. 
So, but this is the plinth you were talking this about. This is the plinth. Yeah, exactly. It's the same thing. They can have a uh, live fish over here. Here, they can have yeah. live fish here. Every facilities they can have over here. Yeah, so schools, um, community centers. Community centers. Monarul told me that the main hazards communities face are floods and river erosion. But they also face droughts, cold and storms. With these hazards, the soil is, is changing. So this is when we can actually see the impacts of the, the increasing of this, this climate hazards. Soil is changing, so it's very sandy, which makes not good for plantation. The weather is warmer, the lack of rain. It brings also more disease especially new diseases that people don't really know about, like skin disease, allergies, and definitely it brings more financial difficulties. And But the thing is, people are seeing all these differences and the climate hazards being more impactful. It's when I, I ask them how they perceive climate change, they don't really have an answer for me. Uh, when a situation of, well, I guess river er er erosion is something that is always happening and at yeah. some point it's just not possible to live there anymore, I guess. Yeah. When do they, or even with the floods, uh, when is the point that they decide, okay, now we have to leave, we have to, to go to another char or to find another place to live? Okay. The point they decided to leave that char that uh, when they think uh, they saw that it, it it's impossible to stay over here it it will break down within an hour or within a day okay, so, uh, so it's so rapid yeah. <laughs> that in that point they decided to, okay we have to leave yeah there is the the idea of what is happening but the fact is that people don't really know for sure what is climate change or they don't really think much about it because it's not a priority. They are fighting to live every day. What the organization do is kind of try to educate people on that sense and for them to be more aware, but it's, it's, not, it's not something that is tangible and it's not a priority. The nonprofit organization that I have been working tries to design this sustainable community. Um, they provide infrastructures, satellite clinics, early warning systems with a group of flood volunteers. They provide trainings, seeds, resistant materials for building their houses. They elevate the soil. They work to give them skills, which help them to become more sustainable, to live in those places, in the chars. But the, the thing here is that climate change is very unpredictable. It makes more challenging to predict the future of a char, even though the organization always try to put their efforts in a char that will last more time, but it's, it's, it's always very unpredictable. So one question that we can bring up is why is this important? Why are these projects important? And why should someone halfway around the world care about these kind of projects? Well, it's important because assisting these peoples and raising awareness on this, this issue enables them to remain in their homes and country close to their families rather than migrating to congested urban areas or even other countries. Managing the global migration crisis is already very challenging without depriving people from their rights. So fostering adaptive capacity and providing mitigation measures helps individuals to stay rooted in their communities and gives them a chance to live here. So it looks like this area of Bangladesh requires solutions on multiple levels to bring about the sense of security that you mentioned. However, investing in quality education and skills training stands out as the option likely to offer the biggest return on investment. It empowers individuals to deal with the challenges of climate change, contribute to economic growth, and participate in creating a more resilient and equitable society.